really quickly, just so people understand, and I want you to tell me if I'm getting this right or I'm getting this wrong. There is a huge difference between taking a red rose and a white rose and cross-pollinating these things to get a pink rose, correct? And taking taking a fish gene and putting it into a tomato. Am I yes. right? And can you just explain that real quick? With regard to red rose, white rose, crossbreed them, end up with a pink rose, maybe depending on how the colors are, are encoded, versus take a furin cleavage site take a coronavirus and and put them together right. what's what's the big deal and this and this is what you will hear from people who say why are you concerned about genetically modified organisms we've been doing artificial selection for humans have been doing artificial selection for at least 12,000 years because that's about how old agriculture is and we've probably been doing it since before then right right so the the, the difference is that if it can be if you can without using fancy technology got it coerce two organisms to breed, then there is history there of those genes in those two organisms having had what we call in evolutionary biology shared fate. If there has been, if there, if there has been a shared history before and they can move together in the future without any help from, without any outside help, exogenous help from humans, then it might not be a good offspring. It might, it might die in the your womb. If it was a mammal, it might not set seed. If it's a plant, there, you know, it might fail in a number of ways. But if it does succeed, it still might not be a fantastic offspring, but there is history there. All of the genes in that resulting organism, in that F1 or generation, have been together before, even if they've never been together in exactly this, this organization. Understood. Whereas when you're talking about genetically modified organisms, which again, like, like gain of function research is sort of a vague term that could be used to mean something fine, but genetically modified organisms usually are, that term is usually used to mean exactly what you said, like a furin cleavage site over here, SARS-CoV, a coronavirus over here. Let's put them together in a way that these things have never seen each other before. Got it. What might happen? Maybe nothing. Probably. Uh -huh. My guess is that most GMOs that have been created, probably fine, but we don't know. We have no way of knowing. This is, again, this difference between a complex system and a complicated system. A complex system where you've got a history, hundreds of millions of years old, for some organism into which you introduce genes that have never been in that organism before. Right. Maybe it'll work out, but how would you know? How would you possibly be able to predict that in advance? You can't. And so, I mean, this is part of how it was clear to many of us, including Brett and me, early in COVID, that they weren't telling us the truth, when they started claiming, for instance, that the vaccines were definitely safe and effective. Uh -huh. It's like, they might be, they might be, and it turns out they weren't, but they might be, but you can't know that yet. R if you just no generated these in the last months, know that, of course. would not know that, right? And that's how you know they're full of crap because there's no possible way what they're telling you could be right. true with absolute certainty. And then, <laughs> then you have to ask, what else are they lying to us about? Right. If they're lying, if they if they're clearly lying to us about that, and again, at the time, it's not that we were sure that they weren't safe and effective. We just could be sure that they couldn't know that they were safe. Uh -huh. Therefore, they were lying to us about the safety. And as it turns out, they were wrong. Yeah. Right. So the the lie wasn't. Uh, I don't know. The lie wasn't necessarily they're not safe, and we know what we're going to tell them they're safe. The lie was we can't know if they're safe yet, but we're going to tell them they're safe. And then later on, this is like, it's, it's nuanced, right? It's like safe, safe, yes, safe, no. Like, no, <clears throat> all we know for sure in, let's call it like November, 2020. So we've got <clears throat> Biden now coming into office. Suddenly all the Democrats are rah, rah in favor of these vaccines yes. where, you know, Kamala Harris have been saying, I would never accept would never a touch Trump it, yep. vaccine, <laughs> right? So <clears throat> nothing has changed except the person whose like name is at the top of the bill. And, <clears throat> and we're being told, oh, they're, they're safe and effective. Like, you can't know that. You cannot know that. And they couldn't. Heather, are you, do you have any sort of understanding? I, I know you, you've said specifically, like, Jill, this isn't the, the, my specialty, but what mRNA tech actually is or, hmm. or how this COVID, I'm going to say shot, even though they call it a vaccine, is different than yeah. previous tech for vaccines? Yeah. Because that, that sort of leaves us into this whole, like, Stargate thing and people <laughs> right, are deeply right. concerned. And, and to be honest with you, I don't understand it at all. All I know is I've had Senator Johnson on the show who had raised the alarm bell about 
practice and uh, what is it? Do you, what is mRNA? Yeah. Do you have? I don't get it. Do you have? A, can you give yeah. me like the one on one? 